Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this video tutorial we're going to do one more project, <laughs> one more mushroom project using this adorable brand new funky mushroom stencil, funky mushrooms stencil. Um, so earlier I showed you these, these are some little um, shelf sitters that I made yesterday. And then we did this banner earlier today. And it has some cute little stuffed mushrooms on it too. Uh, let me hang this back up. So we're gonna do one more project with mushrooms and then we'll move on. And I think we'll either do this one next or the bless your heart. All right, as you are hopping on, say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle, all that usual stuff. Let me show you what we're gonna be using today. Okay, well, we're gonna be using this stencil, but mine, I have cut mine into three individual pieces because it's easier for me to work with it that way. So we're gonna use that, and we're gonna be using black magnolia ink. The ink is what you need for fabric, um, and they have a white lid. Okay, so we'll be using that. Um, we will be using canvas duck. This is the most awesome stuff. I craft with canvas duck fabric several days every week. Um, I love to make stuffies and all kinds of fun things with it. So we'll be using some of this. You can get this at any fabric store, um, a lot of craft stores like Hobby Lobby that have a fabric department will have it. You want to buy the thickest canvas deck that you can get um, and then do not wash it. Okay, and then we're going to use a variety of different ribbons, some little black buttons. These came from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some reindeer moss, also from Dollar Tree some dowels. Where are they? Okay, there. Wood round dowels from Walmart. And I think that's pretty much it. So let's start at the very beginning and I'm going to show you how you stencil on this. But before we do that, I want to cut a little strip uh, and cut and then tear a little strip so that I can use it for my bow. So, who loves ripping fabric? That sounds so strange, but it is so oddly satisfying. I just made a little clip, and then I'm just going to tear it, and I'll pull the strings off, and it's got this nice fringe. This stuff is amazing. Um, okay, so let's do a stencil. So, I think... We'll do this little one, it's darling. And um, I've used these stencils now, each one around four times. And they are great. These are reusable many, 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 many times. I'll, I'm sure I'll reuse mine way more than I even should. Uh, but yeah, they're great to work with. I'm just gonna squeeze that onto my piece of fabric. It's adhesive and And then I'll cut a back for it after it's dry, but let me show you how this part is done. Stenciling with ink on fabric is no different than stenciling on a wood piece or paper. But people tell me all the time that they're afraid or that they don't know how to do it. It's exactly the same thing. You want to put on the minimum amount of the medium. This is ink, not chalk paste. You want to get it, everything covered, but not go over and over and over and over. And then you let it dry. So I'm just going to get a glob. And I'm going to use the new Magnolia squeegees that were just released today to get into some of these tight spots.
This one right here is my fave. So let's pick up some of this ink that's just sitting down here and see how it's on there. And I'm just going to put in my glasses so I can see. These squeegees are so good for tight spots where you're afraid that if you use a regular squeegee, you'll go out of bounds, if that's the right word. Let's see. Let me grab a paper towel. that in some water later. So this is what it looks like. This fabric is really thick, so I did not worry about it going through to the other side. But if you have something thin, then you want to protect your surface. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. Look how adorable that is. Absolutely adorable. It would look super cute on a t-shirt too. Okay, I'm throwing this face down in my tub of water over here. And I would let that dry. Then I would pin it to another piece and cut around, around the shape like a half an inch roughly. And that's all I would do for that. Let me set this over here so I don't wreck it. This is my squeegee, my little tub of water. You always want to put the lids back on your inks and chalk paste. Pronto. Okay, so before I came live, I did all of this stuff just so that I would be prepared for you and you wouldn't have to be waiting to watch me do all this kind of boring stuff. So um, this one right here is pretty much finished. This one is just getting started. We're going to stuff it and then glue it shut. And basically what I did, I left this open, is I glued my wood dowel to the back piece um, so it'll stand up straight and be nice. And uh, I'm using my low temperature hot gluing uh, device. I'm probably like you, I've had way too many hot glue burns, and now I really just, I don't hardly ever use hot, hot glue anymore. Trim some of this up. Okay, so I left this part open, and this is what I'm using today. This is my favorite kind of polyfill. It's from Walmart, but I'm sure you can get it elsewhere at a fabric store. This is really stiff. It's crafter's choice. Um, it's 20 ounces, whatever that means. I don't know. And it's ideal for doll making. And it just, it holds its shape. It's easy to work with. Uh, it's not terribly expensive. And so whenever possible, that's what I use to stuff um, any of my projects that need to be stuffed. Just cramming this in here. Okay, and now I'm going to glue down a little bit further on the sides. And I hope you'll stay with me. Oops, let's just pull that piece out. Stay with me because I'm going to show you uh, how we're going to embellish these. I have a hard time doing a project without adding an embellishment. How about you? And what I'm going to show you today are kind of this stacked bow, which I didn't invent that. I don't know who invented it. Um, probably somebody super creative like Brooke Riley or Mel Melanie Ferguson or uh, 
But anyways, this is my version of a stacked bow. So let's just cram the rest of this in here. And you can fill these as full or not as you want. Pamela says she loves em embellishing. <laughs> yep, me too. If, if there's a possibility to add a ribbon or a bow to something, I almost always do. Okay, so here's one. Let's do the next one. It's this right here. So I've got everything all cut out and I have a piece that I cut that's the back piece. Okay, and we'll fiddle around with the length of these dowels once they're finished. Pamela says she uses my idea of burlap flowers all the time. Oh my gosh, I love to make those. Those are so fun. Okay, so I'm going to just do... It's not very centered, Heidi. And let's start at the top. So I have been out of town. Like in the last six weeks, my husband was pointing this out to me. In the last six weeks, I have been gone almost three weeks of that. My last trip uh, was to see my mom in Boise, Idaho, and that was a wonderful trip, although she's not, not doing super great. Um, but I am so glad to be back home and to be crafting with you guys. I miss that. Uh, and so many of you guys were so nice to say that you missed me too. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's stuff the top of this. even really have to do these very full if you don't want to. This is such a personal preference kind of thing. Okay, I'm going to glue this side down right here. Let's go down these sides just a little bit. And then we'll stuff the stem and then we'll do our, our embellishments. Oh gosh, Pamela says that she had a trip planned out to South Dakota, but her husband fell off the roof and they couldn't go. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I hope he's okay um, and recuperating and all that. My husband's one of those crazy guys, too. He likes to get up on the ladder to clean out the gutters, and I'm like, ugh, makes me absolutely nervous every time he does that. Anyways, hey, Heather, how are you doing? You need to come over and get your goodies from Celebration whenever's good for you. Okay. Look how adorable these are. They don't want to stand straight. Okay, let me trim some of the stuff that's poking out off the bottom, and then we will do our embellishing, and then we'll talk about this. This said something on it. I don't even remember what it was. It was from Dollar Tree. It just has two little blocks a floral foam in there, and a little bit of this reindeer moss. We're going to add some more, also from Dollar Tree. Um, okay, so here's a bow 
a stacked bow that I'm going to use for this one. And I think I'm not going to put a button on this one, but we'll put a button on the other. I want them to all be black and white, but all be slightly different. Okay, remember I tore this piece? We're going to use this in our stacked bow. So I have two pieces. I'm just going to do a little crisscross. And I like to put a little teeny dab of glue on the back because it holds it together so it's not all slipping around. And then let's do some of this fun ribbon. Um, this ribbon has like a little pom-pom edge and I, you might put that in the back. I got it at Hobby Lobby when it was 40% off a few years ago and I absolutely love it. these on the back. And I'll put this one on the top of it. And then we'll do another ribbon of some sort. And then I'm going to show you how I um, how I like to finish these off. Okay, what should we do? Let's do, let's be too busy to have this teeny tiny little, what do you guys think? I think that would be fine. I'm gonna do three pieces of this. And I can trim them all after I have it assembled. And in case you don't know what this is, this is a ribbon card. I need to dig out that video because I haven't shown it, I haven't played it in a while. But if you're drowning in ribbon like I was, not literally drowning, but overwhelmed by the amount of ribbon I had, it's a great way to consolidate your ribbons all into one spot, take them off those rolls that take up so much space. I'll dig that video up and um, I'll put a link to it if I can find it here in these comments. Okay, so I'm the very top one I'm going to do crisscross and then I'm going to do one across the center. So see, this is what it looks like right now. And then I am going to take a zip tie. This little zip tie came from Dollar Tree. I don't have the packaging anymore. It was in the area of the store where they have like the um, auto mechanic stuff and that kind of thing. Which way does this go? So I'm just putting that in the center, and I'm going to turn it over and tighten it. And this is what's going to cinch everything in. And you're going to need to fiddle with it a little bit when you're done. I can even sometimes glue my pieces, my ribbon pieces down so they behave how I want them to behave. So they lay where I want them to lay.
Okay, so this is what this is looking like right now. And it's not super fabulous yet. I'm going to cut this tail off. And then I'm going to just take a little tiny piece of this um, canvas duck. And cut it thinner. And then I will wrap it up a little bit. So it's great on both sides. hot glue right here this is going to look great on our project and let's add a little button, since we didn't do that to the other one. Uh, these are nothing fancy or special, they're just, they're black. I want a little, little one, would that work? That would work perfect. These were $1.25, and I've seen these at Dollar Tree in mixed colors, and then in lots of different plain you know, all one color, all one of the same color. Oh, that's going to be super cute. Okay, and that's going on this one. And I'm going to glue it on right here. I may come back and trim it up a little bit more. We'll see. I think I will, because I think it's too big. Okay, let's fiddle with this for just a second. First thing I'm going to do is I, um, this was just some ribbon, some of the uh, five and a half inch burlap ribbon that you can get at Walmart that I cut the edges off and frayed it and just glued it on here. And then I'm going to take some of this black and white and go in the center of that. Ellen says, oh my, so stinking cute. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I love crafting. I really do. Who in the world would have ever thought that this could be, like you guys, this is my J-O-B. And I absolutely love it. I should have been a teacher. I was just telling my sister that. Um, instead of a lawyer. Okay. I could come back and add some uh, little, oh, let's add some more of this reindeer moss. I could come back and add buttons on there or whatever if I wanted. containers that I've repurposed probably about six times. <laughs> so it was one thing and then it was another thing and then it was another thing. Okay, I'm going to start with this guy here in the center. And then I'm going to put this one over here. And I think I'm going to have to cut this one a little bit shorter. And I just brought some of these wire cutters 
you just pinch, it'll take it right off. We might need to cut that a little bit shorter. Let's see how that works. What do you guys think? Okay, tell me the honest to goodness truth. Should I cut them shorter? That's what I want to know. I kind of feel like I should. Let's do just a little bit. We'll do about the same length on each one so that they're, you know, the same relative heights. I could have used probably the shorter dowels. So my projects earlier kind of had a 1970s vibe, but I don't feel that with this. What do you think? Is it cute or what? So let me know in the comments if you would like um, my supply list and I'll list everything. Uh, you know, I'll even mention that this one ribbon was from Hobby Lobby. I think all the rest were from Dollar Tree. The buttons were Dollar Tree. The wood dowels were um, Walmart. I'll list everything, including this adorable funky mushroom stencil and this black ink. So let me know if you would like my supply list. Um, feel free to sprinkle. Feel free to ask questions if you have any. Um... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Do with this or this uh, if you liked it. You know, when I was gone in Idaho visiting my mom for almost a week, I don't know, it's like Facebook. <laughs> it's such a mystery. Uh, it's like my algorithms with Facebook are almost completely dead because they are not showing my videos to anyone. So if you could sprinkle this video, that would definitely help me. Which way am I? Anyways, I'll get close-up pictures of everything. Um, let me know if you want my supply list. And, um, yeah, and I'll get you the welcome, uh, pump, the welcome stencil that has the pumpkins and fall leaves, too. Alrighty. Um, you can cut these apart. Somebody's saying they wish that they were spaced further apart. They put them close so that you could do it all as one. And if you felt uncomfortable um, using these teeny tiny, cutting them and then how close it was, let me just suggest this idea. You can use blue painter's tape or even masking tape uh, and just put it, I'm going to show you, on the areas of your stencil that you're afraid that you will go out of bounds. So I would just tear this into several pieces and I could uh, easily get that area that I would be afraid that I'm going to go out of bounds covered up. So, And this won't hurt your stencil. So it makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to cut your stencil, obviously, but you can if you want. It's not against the law, like some people might think. Okie dokie. Have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for joining me. I will see you guys tomorrow. I uh, don't know what we'll be doing. Maybe I have an idea for this. Maybe we'll be doing a lumber pillow with our highland cow and giving it like a fall-ish floral head uh, barrette or whatever you call it, headband thing and possibly if i can get out and get a new t-shirt i might show you how to do this because i think this is going to make the cutest t-shirt ever bless your heart <laughs> which is such a southern saying and even if you don't live in the south it's adorable. Okie dokie.
Have a wonderful evening. I'll see you guys later.